Welcome everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where, from where, wherever you are. So uh, today I was going to talk to you about uh, world views and um, I've decided to put that off until two weeks from now. I'm currently working on the latest um, analysis that I've been doing regarding worldviews and regarding global consciousness indicators. And I've got some really amazing results to talk to you about. How nations are growing and evolving in consciousness. Um, so I've not quite completed that work, so I'm going to postpone that until the next broadcast, which will be on June the 7th. So today I thought I'd take the opportunity of talking about um, the workshop that I've got coming up. Um, in uh, September, September 22 to 26, here in Tuscany, just around the corner from where I live. This uh, workshop is called Living Your Soul's Destiny. It's about finding well-being and learning how to flourish in your life. Um, we've put on this workshop many times already and you can find out a lot more about it on the website of the Academy. That's uh, www.aahv.global, the academy, and look for the title workshops and you can find out all about it. But what I wanted to tell you today is what are, they, what are the things that will be going on in that workshop and what we'll be discussing? I mean, it starts really with the idea of we're all looking to find well-being and we're all looking to flourish in our lives. And the question then is, well, what is well-being? What is the definition of well-being? And think about it for a moment. What does well-being mean for you? Well, I have thought long and hard about well-being. I've come to realize that well-being is about being able to satisfy the needs of the stage of psychological development that you're at. Uh, we've talked about the stages of psychological development and in a previous broadcast, um, the surviving stage, that's basically from the moment you're born up to the age of two, that's the surviving stage. And then comes the conforming stage from about age two to seven. Um, and then we move to the differentiating stage from about eight to around early twenties. These first three stages correspond to the uh, development of your mind and your brain, the reptilian mind brain during the surviving stage, the limbic mind brain during the uh, conforming stage and the neocortex during the differentiating stage. The mind and the brain is growing and developing and it's learning every day from experiences what works and what doesn't work in its life and how to get its needs met, how to get its survival needs met, how to get its relationship needs met and how to get feel a sense of security in the world where it lives. So after that, we move into the individuating stage in the late 20s and 30s, from there to the self-actualizing stage in the 40s and then to the integrating stage in the 50s and to the serving stage in the 60s. So at each stage, uh, we have a different needs. We are looking to satisfy different requirements for our lives. So for example, at the surviving stage, all the reptilian mind brain is <laughs> focused on is surviving. It wants to it wants to maintain the homeostatic functioning of the body uh, so it can stay alive. And um, in the conforming stage, you know, these young infants and children, all they're really looking to do is to feel safe and protected and to feel loved. And uh, then at the differentiating stage, uh, like the teenagers and um, young adults, well, they're looking to feel a sense of recognition and respected by their peer groups. So each stage of psychological development has its own needs. And so we find well-being when we're able to satisfy the needs of the stage of psychological development that we're at. So uh, I know many of my audience, uh, those of you who are listening today, will be at the higher stages of development. Let's put it this way. You'll be 
moving from the individuating stage where in the 20s and 30s where you'll be wanting to find freedom and autonomy to explore who you really are outside of your conditioning and in your 40s where you're uh, looking for self-actualization in other words you're looking for meaning and purpose but actually the truth is what you're looking for is self-expression and in the 50s you're looking to make a difference but actually what you're really looking for is a sense of connection because without a sense of connection you can't make a difference and then in the 60s well all we're looking for at that stage is to be of service but really what we're looking for is to be able to make a contribution if we can't make a contribution what is life worth so each stage of psychological development has its own needs and if you're able to satisfy the needs of the stage of psychological development you're at then you'll find a sense of well-being so what is flourishing and there are many different ways to approach the question of flourishing and i approach it from the soul's perspective each one of you is a soul having this human experience and you're here to on a mission basically to learn and to grow and so what is flourishing well flourishing is when you are actually able to meet the desires of your soul there are three main desires of the soul which begin to make themselves strongly apparent um, if you've managed to get through the individuating stage these needs become very apparent in your 40s your 50s and your 60s in the 40s the need is to self-express we talk about finding meaning and purpose but it's really about self-expression and in the 50s as i said it's about connection and making a difference so when you're able to to uh, self-express connect and contribute then you find a sense of flourishing in your life but you don't have to wait that long i mean we could teach our children for example how to self-express connect and to contribute uh, we could change our education system so that we're not focused on uh, turning out uh, young people who are going to uh, make lots of money and are uh, fully equipped to make money uh, in the business world or in the world in general. No, we could uh, we could educate our children differently. We could uh, get them to, even at a young age, have them to give give them a sense of self expression, connect, help them to uh, connect with people. In other words, how to use their values and their emotional intelligence and how to make a contribution. So we could begin that work very early uh, in our education system. So that's that's basically uh, where we start on in this workshop. So we want to figure out what are your soul needs. We also want to understand who we really are and and for that I dig deep into what is known as the three-dimensional material world and the fourth-dimensional energetic world. The fourth-dimensional energetic world is the world of the soul. We, when we die, we, we don't lose consciousness, we just lose our limited awareness of this three-dimensional material world. And we go back to this higher energetic reality where the soul lives all of the time. Um, you, your soul incarnated in this life to learn particular lessons but um, the soul finds it very painful to be in this world of separation and so at a very early age creates the ego as a buffer to, to prevent the pain of separation um, from getting to the soul. So, the, so the, the soul kind of hides behind the ego and as the ego grows and develops during the first 20 years of our lives it develops beliefs about being in this three-dimensional material world and th those beliefs can be really strong and some of them are very fear-based. If you don't get your survival needs met, if you feel abandoned etc you learn that it's very difficult being in this world because you can't trust anybody and if you are not loved um, then in the second stage of development you grow up feeling a sense of having difficulty making relationships with people and then in the differentiating stage if you don't feel respected by others you don't have a peer group where you can connect and feel secure then you will feel that it's difficult to get those needs for recognition met. And so 
you will learn fear-based beliefs which will stay with you for the rest of your life. And so as you get to the individuating stage and you're looking for freedom and autonomy, and as you get to the, as you get to the uh, self-actualizing stage where you're looking to self-express, these unmet needs from the first three stages are there in your mind all of the time and they hold you back. So that's one of the things that we concentrate on on this workshop is what stage of development are you at Therefore, what is it that uh, you are primarily f should be focused on? And secondly, what's holding you back? So your primary motivation is, is the, are the needs of the stage of psychological development you're at. And your secondary motivation are the unmet needs from the early stages of, of your development. Now, believe you me, everybody has these secondary motivations. Um, you know, every family is dysfunctional up to a certain point, and some are really dysfunctional. And so, when we are kids, we we learn that you know we may uh, we don't may we don't have enough. We we're not loved enough, and um, and uh, we we're not enough. And that these secondary motivations are there subconsciously playing out when we're looking to satisfy those unmet needs for the rest of our lives. So many people just never individuate. Um, but what we need to be able, but we, as we go through the individuating stage, most well, a lot of people in, let's say, who are brought up in um, Western democracies or by self-actualized parents, they will learn some fears, but those fears won't hold them back from these upper stages of development. But the you will have to deal with these fear-based beliefs if you really want to fulfil the higher stages of development. And that's uh, a big focus in this workshop. What's holding you back from flourishing? What's holding you back from a sense of well-being? So we dig deep into, into those motivations. The, the workshop takes place over four days. Um, it uh, starts on day one uh, in the afternoon and we, we have this discussion around well-being and flourishing. And then we look at the soul's journey on the next day. Who are you really? What is what are you doing in this three-dimensional material world? And do you recognize that actually behind this world is another world? Uh, uh, you know, you, we recognize it because we all here have synchronicities in our life or we have paranormal experiences and we say, that's strange, what's going on? Well, actually, that's happening in this fourth-dimensional energetic world. And... And the soul is trying to support us in our growth and development, but we don't realize that's who we are. And so in my book, What My Soul Told Me, I talk about how um, we need to get on board with who we are. And first of all, we need to, to connect with the soul. Again, this is something we teach in the workshop. Then you need to befriend your soul. And then once you befriend yourself, you need to trust yourself. This is a difficult stage because it's like, oh my God, what's happening to me? Can I trust my soul to help me get through this? Um, well, you can. Uh, it, it's, it's hard sometimes. It's really hard. I went through a difficult period just uh, recently and I, was, I really had to learn, uh, take my own medicine. I had to learn how to trust my soul so I would get through it. I had to learn to let go of things that I'd been hanging on to. I'd like to, I had to move forward by letting go. So when you can get to the stage of recognizing actually that you are the soul, you don't have a soul, you are the soul, um, then you can get to the point of trusting this intuition, trusting this, this inspiration that comes to you every day. For me, uh, you know, I'm constantly writing books. I write a book every year and um, onto my 13th book and the 14th is already, I'm already thinking about it. And um, I get all of this inspiration from my soul. I get told what books to write. I get told what to put in the books. Um, and it's a daily a daily thing with me, this uh, sense of inspiration. Sometimes, uh, you know, I make mistakes and then I, you know, I, I get angry or upset. And that, but I know that actually 
That's just because I've had a need that hasn't been met. And so uh, learning to be and uh, the soul, or if you like, be the servant of your soul is a fundamental and uh, learning to connect with your soul is also fundamental. So we, we teach how to connect with the soul, how to have a dialogue with your soul, how to talk to your soul so that you can get a sense of the presence of the soul in your life. We also look at, well, what is it? What is it? What is your real creativity? What's your real self-expression? You know, I, I myself uh, was a transportation engineer up to the age of 45 and I, I, I was got totally bored with my career. I was very successful, but I was bored. And I realized that actually I, it wasn't transportation that uh, well, I was interested in, it was transformation. So I began gradually at the age of uh, 45 to transform my whole life to do what I do now. Now that's almost 30 years ago and I've been following that path ever since and that's how I found well-being, that's how I found fulfillment in my life by sacrificing, I know this sounds tough, sacrificing my life to my soul, but actually that's who I am and that's how you get joy. That's how you find joy in your life is to be able to live from soul consciousness. I mean, happiness is okay, but happiness tends to be short-lived. You know, I tell this story that uh, happiness often has a lot to do with releasing fear. Uh, my wife and I were traveling to Catania in Sicily uh, two years ago and as we were approaching the airport, um, in the sky, uh, the pilot said, you know, there's a problem at Catania, we're going to have to go to Palermo. And everybody on the plane got upset and shouted at the uh, head stewards. And I just sat there really calm. I thought, you know, oh, okay, we're going to Palermo. It's a four hour drive back to Catania, but okay, so what? And then um, uh, five minutes later, the pilot came back on and he said, yep, yeah, we're definitely going to um, Palermo. And I thought, okay, and everybody's getting upset and angry. And 10 minutes later, the pilot comes on again and says, oh, we're going to Catania. And the whole plane erupted in happiness. And I realized that, you know, that happiness is, is like often the, the release of fear. So everybody was like fearful about having to go and upset about going to uh, Palermo, but uh, it's because their needs were not getting met. So they got angry. And then when their needs were met, they became happy. So happiness can be very short lived and maybe has a lot to do with, oh, I'm not, I'm not getting my needs met. Oh, now I am getting my needs met. For example, you may get anxious about taking your driving test. And then when you pass, you feel very happy for a day or so. So I, you know, uh, for me, happiness doesn't do it. I want to move beyond happiness. I want to move into joy. And joy is um, the positive expression of the soul. When the soul is able to get its needs, its desires, made, I, the soul for me doesn't have needs, and the soul has desires. When it's able to get its needs, desires met, it feels a sense of joy. When the soul can't get its desires met, it feels sad. Uh, well, you feel sad, and then eventually you may feel depressed. And so very often depression is all about this lack of alignment between ego and soul, the needs of the ego and the desires of the soul. The desires of the soul are not being met. The ego is trying to get its needs met, but actually the needs of the ego are not really fundamental uh, to the happiness, your happiness. Um, so anyhow, I've been giving you a broad idea of the workshop and what we do uh, in this workshop. And um, you can see at, uh, at the, uh, on the website at aahv.global, um, you can see people's responses to having been at the workshop. And people go away with a very profound sense of shift, uh, an opening of the doorway into another dimension of their existence. So if you can come, I encourage you to do so. Um, much of what I've been talking about in these um, 
Facebook Lives actually uh, is a, the material that I use in the in the workshop. Um, so that's it for today. But I do want to give you a, a little sense of what's coming up on, on June the seventh. I'm very very excited about it. I have a I have a researcher working with me, and I'm going to say uh, tell you her name. Her name is Zoe. She's a, a young person. Uh, 21 years old and she is an absolute delight to work with and uh, she and I have been looking at the evolution of consciousness of 145 nations over the past six years and we can trace how nations are growing and evolving we can see what's happening in the world and I'll be giving you some snippets of information in on June the 7th uh, we are at the moment finalizing report about the uh, evolution of human consciousness at, at, at national levels. And, but so I'll, I'll be talking about that on June the 7th and I'll be actually uh, talking about that at several other times over the summer as I produce uh, various reports about uh, the evolution of human consciousness. So I look forward to talking to you then. And in the meantime, I send everybody lots of love. Uh, in fact, I send you a wish for joy. Uh, I send you the wish that you can access uh, your soul and live the life that your soul intended to for you. So goodbye until June the 7th.